What's going on guys, Victor here. Today is Florida lobster mini season, day one of the 2021 season. I got all my favorite people behind me. What do we got there? We got her done. Anything else? We got a bunch of lobster. Woo! It. So if you guys want to see how we caught them, how we cleaned them and how we cook them, stay tuned. First one of 2021 mini season. Well, that's the biggest one. That's the biggest one of the morning so far. It jumped out of your dad's net and straight into this one. The what? There we go, number Why four. You All right guys, first dive, first spot. We got a total of 14 lobster. Brooke has yet to go in the water, but she's hopping in at this spot. Check this out. You guys see him in the water, but this is what it looks like out of the water. There's a nice big juicy lobster. Full of grown one right there. So at this point in the day, you guys see there are hundreds of boats out here. All the way over there, all the way over there. And basically you just got a spot hop. Uh, a lot of people ask us where to go. We have spots everywhere. That's the thing with lobstering is you have to go from spot to spot to spot, especially on a day like today because they all get picked clean. I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good.
ourselves a big one. This might be the biggest one of the day right here. Yeah. Some of you may have already seen this. This is the net you guys always see us use. These are actually custom made by Brooke and I. Every single one is hand built here in Pompano Beach, Florida. You guys see they work. This was opening day of Florida lobster mini season. We got a full season ahead of us and these nets work so well. They're clear, the lobster can't see them coming and the nicest thing, my favorite part about them is the fact that you have the shallow netting. No one wants to spend five minutes tangling, untangling the lobster out of the net. You net them right there by the tail, you pull them out, they go in the cooler, it's as simple as that. And, let's show the tickle stick. Double trouble to go along with the lobster net, we got the all new tickle sticks. These are clear acrylic tickle sticks. You got a little hole right there. You guys can attach your gauge or whatever you want to with your lanyard right there. Also custom built by Brooke and I. And you guys can find both the net, our new shirts, and the tickle stick at floridalobsternets.com. I'm very proud of Brooke. She basically built this business all by herself. So uh, we're gonna head back to the dock, clean these lobster up, and whip them up for you guys. Alright guys, I'm going to quickly show you how to clean a lobster. Very simple and easy. All you're going to do is you need a nice pair of gloves or else you're going to rip your hands up by doing this. So you're going to take one hand, put it on the head, the carapace of the lobster. Take your other hand and put it on the tail. You can either go like this. I prefer to go like this because as you can see, they got spines and horns and thorns, whatever you want to call it, like all over their bodies. So they are sharp creatures. These are their horns. You never want to get those in your hands. So. I like to fold the tail like this, and then you're gonna grab one hand here, one hand on the head, do it over the water, and you're gonna twist. You see all that water that just came out? That is lobster blood, and it is gnarly when it dries. It dries like glue. Take your antenna, break off basically like halfway down of the antenna, take the very thicker part of it, and you're gonna shove it up what is the lobster's butt, spin it, the antenna has backwards facing spines, pull it out and what you're doing is you're removing look at that it's full of sand you're removing the lobsters digestive tract so if you were to bring this into your kitchen and just cook it and put that on your plate without removing that first you'd be eating all that sand that was a lot of sand that is all you need to do to get the clean tail and that is ready to go in the kitchen and now the other thing you could do is with these heads you can make a lobster stock you can cook these legs they don't have the world's most amount of meat in them but you can boil them and um, get the meat out of the legs. But you can boil all these heads and make a seafood stock. And there's also these knuckles here. You can take the knuckles off and you can eat the knuckles as well. See that? You got nice meat in the knuckles as well. Right? Too bad they didn't see you pull it out of the shell so okay. they could really see it. Now, if you cooked it in the shell, you'd never know. But you'd be in there bending your damn fork. Yep. That's how we're starting it. So <laughs> tonight we're gonna make lobster rolls. Brian Brooks dad just made his world famous lobster ceviche, which is marinating in the fridge. One thing that I learned from this family on how to approach lobster is take them out of the shell first. I know everyone's tempted to cook them in the shell. It's simple, it's easy, but I'm gonna show you why. It's generally not a good idea. I just took this lobster tail out of the shell. You guys see Lobster do something what's called molting. When a lobster molts, he grows a new shell, right? It's one of the coolest things about these creatures and, and nature. And as they're growing that new shell, depending on what stage of the molting cycle they're in, their shell might not have fully hardened. And that skin that attaches their tail to the shell is gonna be at a different stage depending on the molt, the molt cycle. If you guys look at this, this is a chewy, 
chewy, not appetizing piece of skin that you could very well get. If you cooked your lobster tail whole, and like Brian always says, you get that one lobster tail out of seven people where the guy's just like biting and grinding, it's because of this right here. This stuff will ruin lobster for a lot of people. Florida lobster is delicious, but you gotta know how to take care of it. So what we do, especially for something like a uh, Florida lobster roll, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna remove the skin. So I just cut it in half, and then it's a little awkward because it's not a fish, but you can pretty much fillet it and skin it like you would a fish. Now you guys are gonna be shocked when you see that. I mean, this is thick, fibrous stuff. This is probably one of the worst skins I've ever seen in a lobster. You do not want this in your dish. If you take it out, you get nothing but pure white and pink, just gorgeous lobster meat. And it's gonna make your lobster dinner that much better. What we're gonna do is, I'm gonna do a little spin on a main lobster roll with the Florida lobster roll. Florida lobster roll can be kind of um, thought of as chewy. A lot of people think it's chewy. It's not as soft or sweet as a main lobster roll. To try to kind of combat that, what I have in here is eight tablespoons of butter and whole milk. And I just have it where I'm gonna have it simmering. I'm gonna cook the lobster in that. We're gonna make our lobster rolls, but we're also gonna make a little, just really vibrant and fresh cucumber, tomato, onion salad. And all that is, is gonna be this. We're gonna toss some white sugar in here. Okay, and this is all just to kind of eyeball. Can't really go wrong. Get some acidity in there, we get some vinegar. And the vinegar is gonna kind of take out that like real strong onion flavor and kind of help, kind of like a quick pickle for our vegetables, right? So you want this completely submerged. This You want the, the sugar and the vinegar to really penetrate into the tomato, the cucumber, and the onion. And um, it's just super delicious. It's something my grandma used to make a lot. Absolutely love this. It's a real quick, simple, easy salad to make. I'm just gonna go ahead and stir this, and I also added a little bit of salt and pepper. And you can taste it. Once it tastes right, you wanna just, basically what you're trying to do is balance the, uh, the flavor of sweet, salty, and acidic. So you wanna get the right balance of vinegar to the water to the sugar, and this is super easy to make. So we got our milk and butter mixture up to a simmer. I'm gonna go ahead and add some thyme. This is garlic powder, but it's garlic flavor. Gonna help to flavor our lobster. So we're gonna put our lobster right into our milk and butter bath. So basically what we're gonna do is poach it. Um, when you poach something, you're basically cooking it in liquid. Florida lobster can get really tough on you really quick. Try to kind of mimic that main lobster roll taste. We want it to be super tender. So that's why I wanted to cook it in the, uh, you know, in the dairy fat, the butter and the milk. I think it's gonna give it a super rich and just delicate taste. I'm not really going by a time. Brooks just asked me how long I'm cooking. It's mainly more of take one out, taste it. I want it to be just cooked, like, just where you want to take it off because lobster, like I said, it could get really tough on you real quick. So the lobster has been in our milk and butter bath for about five minutes. Never brought it up to a boil, just a simmer and it's just super tender. Um, you got all that thyme and garlic flavor in there, added a little bit of salt. It's gonna be real rich. So we want to let this cool down a little bit. We're gonna to toss it with some mayo celery and scallion next. Here's the lobster mixed with some celery and scallion for crunch and um, just real flavorful, super fresh. And now we're gonna toss this with some mayo. So this is the main style, Connecticut styles with just straight butter. I just added a little bit of lemon juice as well. To kind of freshen it up. Now we mix. The mayo drizzle in there, the little bit of lemon juice, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be real good. And then over here we had some, these are brioche hot dog buns. Since we're in Florida, nobody sells like the nice open face buns that you guys have in New England for lobster rolls. 
But we got the next best thing. We got brioche hot dog buns, which are gonna have that like real nice, rich buttery flavor. You guys, look at that. Buttery, crispy brioche bun, juicy lobster roll. You know, we've made Florida lobster so many different ways and there's, it's honestly, the sky's the limit. Like, Brooks dad made it ceviche style tonight. Um, Brooks fried it before. We bake it, we make it on the cast iron. It's just, it's really what makes the day for me, is seeing it come full circle. And then you gotta hit it with the Old Bay right on top. Not only for color, but for flavor, man. Old Bay and seafood just go so well together. All right, so I wanna know, can we compete with the main boys? With the lobster rolls. Here we I, go over there. I never had a main one, but this one's real good. I like this Florida lobster roll. Mm -hmm. I had extra um, lobster put in mine, and it's delicious. The lobster roll was banging. Uh, super authentic. It made me feel like I was back on Duval Street in uh, Key West. So, well done, Victor. Living in Florida and you have Florida lobster, I never really ever experienced eating any Maine lobster. We never went to a restaurant and ate it. We never bought it or anything like that. But last year, Victor and I went up to Massachusetts and we had some lobster rolls and they were absolutely delicious. And you don't really eat Florida lobster like that, but Victor absolutely killed it on this lobster roll. This was so delicious, hands down. I even said last year that Maine lobster was better than Florida lobster but we were eating it like that. And this is, I don't know anyone who's ever done a Florida lobster like this before, and it was very, very delicious. So good job, Vic. Hands down, right there with Maine <laughs> lobster. So good job. I know, I ate it so fast. It was really delicious, a fun, yummy way to eat lobster. Um, I loved it, really good. We've always really liked lobstering. It's like one of our family's favorite activities to do. We never really had that many recipes to cook it with. So now that Brooke and Victor are getting so creative, it's like adds a little cherry on top to an already amazing activity for our family to finish it off with meals like this. They're, this lobster roll is amazing. All right guys, there's the Florida lo lobster roll. I have yet to take a bite out of it. Mm. Oh yeah. Not gonna say it's like a main one. It's like a Florida one, but Florida lobster definitely has a special place in all of our hearts. You know, we go out and catch it. It's a little bit more firm. It's got like a meatier flavor, but absolutely delicious. If you guys have never tried it with Florida lobster, I highly suggest it. Cook it in that butter and milk bath and it just comes out super tender. The celery crunch, the thyme, all those aromatics, it comes out really good. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. This is what it's all about. You know, the whole family came together on this day to go diving. Everyone took off work. We're all out here from, we got here at what? 5 a.m. we left yeah, the Yeah, 5 a.m. 5 a.m., it's 8 p.m., we're all still together just enjoying the outdoors and that's what this channel is all about and that's what I wanna show you guys. Go out there and do it with your family. I don't care whether it's fishing, hunting, diving, this is what it's about. This is what nature is about. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.